I want to just take what we walk through in Scripture, and I want to give you a Christian world view. Now, I'm going to do this probably a little too fast, but, but you do your best uh, to, to follow along. A Christian world view. What, what Peter just walked us through is the reality that, that God is the center. This is a God-centered world. That's a Christian worldview. It begins with God. And then we know that God created. And because God created all things, we are here on purpose. We are not here on accident. But in truth, there is sin. That is, we have all sinned. And because we've sinned, we've brought death upon ourselves. The consequences of sin is death and all of us have sinned. But in God's amazing love for us, he sent a Savior. And that Savior, of course, is his son, Jesus. And Jesus came to provide the solution, the restoration, to cover our sin debt. And therefore, we have what Scripture calls salvation. And Peter's referring to this. And this salvation is unearned. Jesus made this all possible for us. And because of this salvation through Jesus, though we have sinned, this God who created us, who loves us more than we could ever know, promised us the gift of heaven. That's what we just read at the end. That is to say that heaven is our home. That's why we live on earth as strangers. And therefore, earth for us, earth is kind of like camping. I, I know, no, how many of you have ever been camping? Just, uh, just raise your hands. How many of you ever been? Of course. And you know that when you go camping, it's temporary. That, that's what he's telling us. In fact, we could just kind of take a moment and draw it out right here and say, the point being is that when we're on earth, earth for us as Christians, a Christian worldview, is that this is temporary and we are looking forward to heaven and heaven is our home. And that sets a particular belief, position, and framework or perspective view of suffering as well as all the other questions that we're going to ask during this six-week series. And then what God has told us is that as Christians, as followers of Christ, that's as good as my pictures, my drawings are going to get, this is us on earth and you should be holy In the midst of a world that doesn't believe what you believe. You follow Christ, the rest of the world does not. So in the midst of this world, you have a distinct Christian view. Christian world view. And because of this, your heavenly Father, make sure you get this, your Father answers your questions. So when we're answering these frequently asked questions, your world view sets up how you answer And our Father in heaven is the one who gives us guidance, gives us the answers. That's why we look to the Bible, God's word, to guide us in this. And because of that, if you go back to the series that we did together this past August, we talked about rules, and therefore this becomes a God life. God is the the author of my life. I surrender my life to him, so it's God's life, and it's God's rules. Now, that's a really quick, rudimentary kind of overview of a Christian world view. That's completely opposite of a non-Christian worldview. So if I go over here and I go, okay, there's a non-Christian worldview. And some of you hold this view. But it's important to walk through so you understand how you answer the questions is based upon your worldview. So if we apply this across, in a non-Christian worldview, there is no God. Because there is no God, he's not the creator, and so everything came about by a big bang or, or evolution or whatever your theory is. But know this, that this is based on faith. A Christian worldview is based on the facts, the reality of what we live in with faith in God, meaning God gave us all the evidence of his existence, but we've never seen him. However, when you say you don't believe in God, you have to be a non-Christian, an atheist, by faith. Because there's all the evidence of God, and it points to him, and it takes faith to dismiss him and deny him. Everybody's worldview is based on faith. So we keep walking down the line. Therefore, in a non-Christian worldview, there is no sin. Therefore, there's no need for a savior. Therefore, there's no salvation needed or required. Because of that, there is no heaven And there is no hell to be concerned about. No accountability, no concerns. You see the obvious parallel. Therefore, earth becomes home. (laughs) 
I, I, I know some of you are already getting this. You're like, I get it, I get it, but I, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Therefore, when they look at the world, earth is their home. And, and, and if you're, uh, you have a non-Christian worldview as one who is uh, uh, among us on earth, then your view is, I'm here not to be holy, but to be happy. And, and, and this whole thing about heaven up here doesn't even exist. It, 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 it's irrelevant. It's just a figment of other people's imagination. And, and, and you kind of think it's, it's sad that, that they have that view. But you're down here to be happy. And because of that, how you answer the questions in this kind of be happy world is that feelings, and this, this is a simple but clear way to say it, feelings answer your questions. Yet whatever you feel, whatever desire you have, whatever rises up in you, you base your answer on those feelings. In a, in, in a Christian worldview, it's our Heavenly Father. He answers, he gives guidance to those questions for us. And so because of that, which is why we talked in the August series, it becomes my life, my rules. Now, this layout here between the two should make some sense, and it would be Somewhat easy if all of us were just in one or two camps in terms of understanding life. But in reality, it's more complicated than that. In fact, there's more than, than two or three world views. But, but I want to show you something that, that, that adds to the complexity, and Peter is talking about this. There is a group that combines this Christian worldview and this non-Christian worldview. Literally, he talks about false teachers in 2 Peter chapter 2. And that there are people who embrace a belief in God, but their feelings drive decisions. Culture informs their decisions, sets their answers. And there's great confusion in that. So, so again, let me just kind of draw it out for you. So, so this is a person who might say, okay, earth is my home. <laughs> and simultaneously, heaven is my home. And, and I'm going to have the best of heaven, and I'm going to have the best of earth, and I'm going to use their language, but kind of best stuff. And maybe some of us never really use the language that way. Maybe we, we don't set it up that way. But what we're really doing, as we talked about in the series in August, is this is what we might call a jackalope Christian. This is just a jackalope Christian worldview. Remember I talked back at that series, a jackalope is when you take a jackrabbit, and, and, and then you take a deer, and you take the antlers off a deer, and you put them on a jackrabbit, and you call it a jackalope. It's a mythical creature. It doesn't even really exist. And there really is no Christianity that exists where you combine this faith in Jesus with the world's values and bring them into one. And yet many of us find ourselves living that way. And that brings great confusion. And it's informed by false teaching. Our hope in this series is that those of you who are kind of caught right here might make a major move to having your Heavenly Father inform your answers. Honestly, we're not shy about this, that those of you who live here would come here. Because I want to tell you something. When Scripture says be holy, what he really means is be whole. And to be holy means to be whole. And it produces life to the full. It's the most fulfilling life on earth and the promise of eternity with him. Be happy is fleeting, temporary, emotional, momentary happiness that repeated makes foolish decisions and leads to an empty life. It never is be happy. It's just shallow, short-term thinking. Temporarily on earth and for all of eternity. So we, as Christians, have a distinct worldview. We are on earth temporarily. We're camping here. This is not even our home. This is our home. And how we process suffering and pain is different than everyone else. Now that was...